has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. By the way, Carver High, uh, just to reiterate, uh, we got to get it clear. Uh, I think Josh Allen's um, girlfriend, this Steinfeld, was in uh, Pitch Perfect movies and also uh, Hawkeye, the Marvel show. So she does well, have some accolades. Uh, she has some accolades. I, I know, Gabe, and you were talking about this earlier. I personally uh, probably couldn't pick her out of a lineup. That's just right. me. Uh, that. But that's also because, you know, I have very small children and basically I haven't seen a new movie uh, or television show that for adults uh, in like six or seven years now. Uh, so that so that's just kind of the life that I live. That's uh, highly if unfortunate. It a, if it was a cartoon on the on the Disney Channel or something like that, I'd probably be able to tell you all about it. But or a new movie, animated movie. But I don't know who she is um, and I don't frankly care uh, either. But good. Good for Josh. Uh, that he's in Paris as long with her as he's and he's happy. doing all this. As long as he's happy and he, and he wins football games, uh, that really is. Because uh, he lives some life now uh, when the football season ends. He's at every big golf tournament. He's playing in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. He's at Riviera playing practice rounds with uh, with Tiger. He's in Paris with the girlfriend. But he can't beat uh, the Chiefs. <laughs> he can't beat the Chiefs, though. He can't do that, but we spend plenty of time. So, uh, doing other things. Uh, what's your thoughts on Simmons? Like, uh, do you disagree with me? I think uh, he needs to retire. I'm with you 100%. I was going to say the same thing to you. Give it up. Just end it. Like, uh, it's 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 over with. There's no reason for him to keep this charade up. Do you think he's just doing it? Maybe there's something, this guy he doesn't get all the money. Obviously, if he retires, he's just going to keep dragging himself out there uh, to make sure that he gets every dollar, which he's going to get anyway. Isn't it all guaranteed? So, uh, just enough. He's in street clothes every night. I mean, every it's night stupid he's at in street clothes. He has done, uh, let's just face facts. He has done absolutely nothing for the Brooklyn Nets at all. Zero. Zero. And then Zero. the only time that he was ever good was when he was with Philly and he was young and he was healthy. And he could get uh, north and south and do anything with a basketball. Lob, dunk, finish, finger rolls, uh, tomahawks. He could dish it. He could block shots, rebound, run. He did it all. But his body gave up on him years ago. And this has been going on for three, four years now. Let's, let's stop with that he's got something in the tank. My man has nerve damage in his body, in his back, in his neck. Uh, he's got nothing but problems. I think his career is completely finished and over. And yet, we here we go again with this Sean Marks guy. Tell me he doesn't have nude photos with his wife or something because this guy <laughs> uh, should not be on an NBA team anymore. And he they no. keep him around like a dog. And it's just unbelievable to me. I think it's it's got to be something uh, deeper than just a player and a GM or they're from the same country or all of this nonsense. Why is this guy on an NBA roster? I play more basketball than he does, and I had open-heart surgery. Uh, it is amazing, uh, and hopefully there'll be an end to it at some point. Uh, I've already seen Net fans this morning. They don't want him anywhere near uh, the team ever again. Uh, they've had enough of him. Uh, their team's awful. Thing, of course, their team is uh, awful. Their team's awful. Team is awful. Uh, no question about that. Uh, we do uh, welcome all the radio affiliates for all Coast to Coast uh, here on a Thursday Sirius XM Channel 159 Sports Byline. Great to have everybody with us. Uh, one more thing. Uh, Celtics and Nuggets are going to play tonight. We'll get to that in a moment. But they're also going to play two preseason games uh, next year in Abu Dhabi in October. Uh, so get your tickets now, Scotty, like uh, for the preseason everything games over in Abu in Dhabi. sports is uh, being played in Abu Dhabi. And yes, uh, is. Saudi Arabia has got their hands on sports like no other. And now... Uh, they're plotting for the 36 World Cup, and they'll buy the World Cup just like yep. uh, Qatar did, and it's inevitable whether people like it or not. There are more sporting events now in Abu Dhabi than you can shake a stick at. I mean, the UFC has an event there every other month. 
They certainly do. Uh, plenty of events. Let's get to tonight's games. We'll start them and then we'll finish them uh, after the break. Uh, Brooklyn, who we were just talking about uh, with Simmons, they are in Detroit tonight against the Pistons. Uh, they're also not going to have Cam Thomas. They're not going to have Cam Johnson. Uh, Lonnie Walker's questionable as well. But despite all of that, the Nets are favored minus two and a half. This is like the third time this week, Scotty, the Nets have been favored. They were favored against the Grizzlies. They lost. They were favored against the Sixers. They won. Now they're two and a half in Detroit. Two sixteen and a half is the total. Yeah, well, you know, the one thing is the Pistons are worse than they are. So, like, it's yeah. like it's the, you know, the bad and the worse. So I'll take the bad. I'll take the Nets. And I I liked it this morning at two and a half. And I also, um, you know, I think the two of them will put on a show tonight, believe it or not. I've always told you when two bad teams get together, it's usually a pretty good game. So I think there's going to be a lot of scoring in it. And I still like the Nets. The Timberwolves, who are not going to have Cat Towns for the foreseeable future, as we just mentioned, are in Indiana against the Pacers. Pacers minus one and a half, 228 and a half is the total here. Yeah, I bet uh, the Pacers at one and a half this morning and uh, just at minus 110, so no big deal. I like them at home in Indy. We have the Heat and the Mavericks in Dallas tonight. This is a good one. First game, of course, of the TV doubleheader. Mavericks minus four and a half, 229 and a half is the total. Still no hero for Miami. Uh, Luka is probable with the ankle. You know Luka's going to be out there, Scotty, with the run. He's been on four straight triple doubles of 30 plus points for Luka as he enters this one tonight. So I saw a lot of sharp action on the Heat today, Mike. And, mm. uh, you know, I want to see how it plays out. So I'm willing to lean uh, Miami with the points. I've seen the uh, Mavericks screwing up a lot lately. That's just all there is to it. They've been losing games left and right that they have no business losing. And I know I always sell you on uh, Luka and Kyrie. They are unguardable. And I did tell you, I think at the very least, that I have been wearing my whiny crybaby B Lukas. Yes. And they are fantastic <laughs> basketball shoes. I've yet to have any toe bleeding or any problems in them and they look fantastic most of the people that i play with are clearly jealous that i have them uh they certainly are uh it's going to take another uh sizable putt from to gala here to save oh here it is he's lining it up you talk, you talk stories i'll talk putt uh, oh boy <laughs> uh the raptors are in phoenix uh against the suns tonight suns minus 10 and a half 233 and a half is the total. It. Hopefully, he missed the par putt. That's of, just great. Of humanity. So much for that. So no push either. Unless he birdies 18, no push either. Oh, so he uh, falls back. Nice round. job. He fell back to four under. That's 15 insane. footer. He missed it by three inches. Well, what fail. Can you do? Fail indeed. Uh, uh, so Suns was... and the Raptors tonight. Yeah. Suns and Raptors, 10 and a half. Yeah, this one's in Phoenix. And, you know, they got all the problems with Barnes. That number's gigantic, though. I like the Suns here, but I'm very skeptical of laying that big piece. They just F around every night. But I'm on Phoenix. I got three more games for you, including uh, the big Nugget Celtic game tonight in Denver. We'll do that when we come back. Oh, that's an awesome game. As a coach, as a basketball purist, it's so much better to watch than the match. You don't believe me? Sit down, watch it for yourself. Think about the fact that the athleticism is different. So now you have to depend on your fundamental and your skill 
and not your athleticism. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. Maybe not a match that we thought would be the, the most enticing six months ago, but Newcastle, they are they are kind of on the ropes. They looked awful against Blackburn in the FA Cup. I mean, Yamal's been the stand-up player, you know, a guy that's 16 years old, a guy that was drafted in from, from La Masia, from the academy. It says a lot, really. It says a lot about the really poor standard of, of the rest of the players this season. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca, only on Sports Grid. I think Boston's going to the NBA Finals, and at this point, I'm still willing to say this early that uh, they're the best team in the NBA, even better, in my view, uh, than the Nuggets. Barkley, for me, I say the front runners would be the Dallas Cowboys and or the Philadelphia Eagles, and I think that I think Jerry might get in on this and say just make it happen and get Saquon on our football team. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Mike, uh, this game tonight at the ball is fantastic with the Celtics and Nuggets on TNT at 10, the late night start, but it's as good as it gets uh, tonight in sports. I think it's the biggest game in anything, Uh, NHL, NBA, college rack, you name it. This is the deal right here. Uh, It certainly is, as you have the two best teams in the NBA, the two teams at the top of the odds board to win the NBA title, the defending champions. They gave the Celtics their first home loss of the year uh, back in January in Boston uh, in that close 102-100 game. So they get back together tonight in Denver. And the Celtics, Scotty, are the road favorites. How about minus one and a half for the Celtics? 220 and a half is the total. The only thing of injury significance I do see on the reports is that Jalen Brown is questionable uh, with the pelvis injury for Boston. Other than that, it looks good on both sides. Yeah, look, I, I first of all, I saw Denver win in, in Boston, which is uh, nearly impossible. Uh, they've lost two games there the whole year uh, at home in, in their building. So the bottom line is we've already seen the champs go there and beat them by a bucket. I think that's why the Lions won. But I like Denver here at home. I think it's going to be uh, crucial for Gordon and Porter to have big games because we know that uh, the Celtics have to deal with the Joker and with Murray. That's their, I I think they're going to key on uh, stopping the big fella, slowing him down in some capacity, harassing him, hassling him, doubling him as much as possible, not letting him uh, have his normal triple double, which he does every time he touches the floor, it seems like. And then Murray is just a light you up special. So I think the key is, for me, is to see uh, Gordon and Porter come up big and shoot the ball well. We've talked about this before, Mike. The other night, Porter had a 10-for-10 night and 5-for-5 from three. If this guy has anything remotely close to that, which is nearly impossible, he had a perfect night. If he does anything like that, let's say he's, you know, hitting 50 or, or more percent from outside tonight. If he can knock down four threes and get some mid-range shots in and Gordon can go to the 10 and get some dunks 
and get some mid-range shots in and hit maybe one or two threes. I think Denver beats Boston again. Uh, I think Denver beats Boston again as well uh, tonight at home in that game. Second game, of course, of the TV doubleheader. We have a couple other late night games. The uh, Bulls and the Warriors both playing back to backs here. The Bulls have had actually pretty good start uh, to this West Coast trip, Scotty. They've won in Sacramento. They've won in Utah. Tonight they'll try in Golden State against the Warriors. Minus seven and a half for the Dubs, 223 and a half the total. It's amazing to me that everyone and their brother thinks the dubs are easy money here. Uh, Look at the betting volume on uh, Golden State. 94% on the money line, 80% on the eight. Um, And it opened up at six and a half and went to eight. I'm going to grab the eight and say, let's have a great game tonight at the Chase. Chicago's playing great basketball right now. So let's have ourselves a game tonight at the Chase. I don't think anyone sees it coming. I think they all bet their money on on Golden State like it's automatic. And then uh, Chicago backdoor covers. Uh, I'm with you. I'm going to grab the the sticks with Chicago tonight uh, in in, uh, the chase against Golden State. And last one I have for you. Won't be easy. Last one I have for you is the Kings, second night of a back-to-back after the win in Los Angeles, have the Spurs coming to town. Now the significance here, Scotty, is no Wembenyama for San Antonio tonight. He is out. Uh, He's missed, I believe this is the sixth or seventh game he's missed this year. And in all the other games uh, that he did not play, uh, the Spurs, who suck anyway, as you know, uh, got completely smashed in all of those. They're getting 10.5 tonight in Sacramento. 235 and a half is the total. 80% of the money is on the Spurs at 11.5. And And I don't see how you can bet on them without him playing because they're bad with him. And now all of a sudden you're telling me they're going to play in Sacramento without him and cover and everyone's betting on them without him playing. I think, you know, for me, that has to be a mistake that people thought he was playing when they made their bets. And so you see all the results of all day betting and people just thinking he's playing and he's not playing because I didn't know he wasn't playing until you just told me, thank God for you, because I'll tell you what, I'm not betting on them without him. Uh, I wouldn't want to bet on them without him either. Uh, As much as I like to go after Sacramento, who has not been good on those second nights of the back-to-backs, I'm not going to do it with no Wembenyama in the lineup. All right, there you go. That's your night in the NBA. Of course, you'll do more with Coach uh, coming up soon on the lion's share. Uh, We have uh, some college rack going on, believe it or not. Right now, March Madness is here. Conference tournaments, of course, next week will be crazy in the afternoons, late in the week. Uh, But it starts here this week. With the Sun Belt, the Missouri Valley, Uh, we've got a WCC game tipping in about an hour. Uh, We've already had Georgia Southern beat Alabama in the first game there in the Sun Belt. That was. uh, Louisiana is up 18 on Coastal right now in that second Sun Belt game of the day. In the Missouri Valley, uh, Missouri State beat Murray State 60-35. to Nothing like rolling out of bed and scoring 35 points uh, this morning at Arch Madness. And Belmont. Uh, is hammering Valpo uh, <laughs> 40 to 16. So maybe Valpo, you know, they only have 16. We'll see if they can get more than Murray State had uh, in the first game with the 35. So that's your early starts for conference yeah, tournament I think, action. Yeah, um, I think Louisiana is going to finish off Coastal. Coastal's awful. Uh, Valpo's worse. Uh, you, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, I'm not surprised Murray State got whacked. They've had a bad year, uh, but that upset. Uh, of Georgia Southern winning that game with their 9-23 and crappy season was a surprise. I think you'll see a lot more surprises tonight uh, than you're seeing this afternoon in these games that have been played already. Yep, I'm going to give you a bunch of those games uh, coming up here in a bit. First, last night, uh, Houston kind of went through the motions down in Orlando against UCF, uh, but they did end up covering, uh, depending on when you got your number, they won by 8 uh, in that game, Tennessee beat South Carolina 66 59. That was another game, Scotty, that was right on the number, uh, depending on when Did you got it. Did you see the end of the game? <laughs> I, uh, so I, I saw the it. guy <laughs> dunked the ball at the buzzer, <laughs> and if he counts it, they cover, and then yep. they they waved it off, and then I covered. I hit that bet. at I had it at, at five, and I needed to win by six, so he dunks. They wave it off. I hit the bat. So I got lucky for once. Uh, You got lucky for once with that one. And, of course, UConn 
uh, took care of business uh, against Marquette, 74-67. So, Tagala missed a birdie putt on 18, by the way, oh, which would have got him back. Uh, would have got him back in at least a tie ah. for the first round leader. And at least I would have gotten chopped uh, on the dead heat. At least I would have got something back. But unfortunately, he blew it. So he's going to settle for par and finish at four under uh, on the day. That is very unfortunate for me. Uh, Iowa State beat BYU. They came back in that game. BYU was beating them most of the night. Kentucky beat Vandy. Didn't cover. Utah State crushed San Jose State. Big win for Seton Hall over Nova. At the Rock, uh, they needed that one bad. Uh, they beat them by 10. Michigan State beat Northwestern. And Indiana beat Minnesota, as you were talking about with the Corsi. Mike Woodson will be back as the head coach in Bloomington, as he should. So, look, uh, look, I think um, Seton Hall, you know, needed that win more than anybody else last night, and yeah. they got it. I think they're going to get in. And you know what? I like that coach, and I like that team. They have – capabilities so i want to see how they do in the big east tournament on top of the fact that they won a big game that they had to win last night against nova i want to see how they do in the conference tournament see if they can take it up a couple notches go up a couple steps win a couple games and then i think they'll get in without without question uh later on i will give you all the numbers for tonight in college rack including uh, Horizon quarterfinals. We got four games. We got a bunch of games in the Missouri Valley, the A-Sun semis, uh, plenty of conference tournament action for you tonight. And we'll do that later on. I can't wait. I got a lot of games going tonight. I mean, I'm, I'm sweating already and they haven't even tipped off yet. going to the NBA Finals, and at this point, I'm still willing to say this early that uh, they're the best team in the NBA, even better, in my view, uh, than the Nuggets. Barkley, for me, I say the front runners would be the Dallas Cowboys and or the Philadelphia Eagles, and I think that, I think Jerry might get in on this and say, just make it happen and get Saquon on our football team. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. Celtics four points better at minimum than maybe every single team in the NBA and so far I believe they've covered every game since the break the Celtics strict goal here anything less than a finals appearance and a finals championship is going to be a failure for the Celtics they got all the pressure in the world uh, across the board here game time decisions only on sports grid it's smarter to be on sports grid your 24-7 sports wagering network, the early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight 
You may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports rage this late sort night. Of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. So you got to get in on this uh, BetMGM mobile app. I'm telling you, it's the best thing you'll ever do. Sign up, put five bucks in an account. Oh, how do I do it? Oh, you just go on iOS or Android or betmgm.com, download the app, sign up, put five bucks in there, place a five buck bet, five dollars on standard odds on anything, you know, baseball, you know, NBA, college basketball, hockey, whatever. Bet five bucks and win or lose. It's irrelevant. Win or lose, that just doesn't matter. Place the bet for five, boom. BetMGM's giving you 150 in bonus bets, so your account goes from five to 150 immediately. And look, you might even hit the bet and win a little on top of that, and then you'll have even more in there. You'll be loving life. Just use the bonus code SG150. Try BetMGM's mobile app. Once you're on there, all the rest will pale in comparison, and you'll be with them forever. You'll love it. All right, Coach Young. In Monmouth County. Don't forget to catch us on Betting Above the Rim Saturdays and Sundays at 1 to 3 Eastern for the best in basketball talk and best in show and best in entertainment and best in looks and best in food critics. Uh, also, um, I want to just say, because I, I, I can't get into this at any stretch for a length of time uh, due to legal reasons, but I just want to at the very least say, that that high school basketball game the other night between Manalapan and Camden was the most corrupt thing I have. Manasquan, whatever the hell they're called. I don't even care the name of the team. All I know is that was the most corrupt thing I've ever seen in high school sports anywhere in the country. That was the most fixed, most ridiculous, most corrupt, dirty, felonious I don't care. Whoever's in charge of the uh, basketball or, or sports in the state of New Jersey, in charge of that whole thing, should be fired today. And those refs all should be fired, too. I'll tell you what. They admitted afterwards that they were wrong. That made it even worse. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's, all, it's gotten all the way from a lawsuit last night by Manasquan to now even uh, a, sta a state court ruling that they can't get involved. Now it's gone to the Department of Education for a stay to try and not play uh, the finals uh, between with Camden in it. And it's just, it's a sad story. I, I wanted to say this really quick, folks. I want people to understand. I feel bad for the kids of both teams because this is a, this is an impossible situation for the kids of Camden and the kids at Manor Squad. A couple of adults ruined it. You can go on my social media. You'll see everything I put out there. I don't need to get into it further. But all I hope is this. There needs to be a remedy, a solution in the state of New Jersey that benefits the kids, not just in basketball, in every sport. We have to make sure, folks, when it comes down to high school athletics, we put the kids first. So what would you do? Rules. Play it again? Play it again? They, they well, lost I, the game. I, 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 why, why do you feel I, I sorry say, for them? Why do you feel sorry for them? They well, lost. I feel sorry for them because it, it wasn't the actions of the players. It was the actions of the adults. It's, they didn't win. Well, it's, well, to me, it's more about the actions of the assistant coach, uh, the AD of Camden, who could see, be seen trying to argue with the refs, the supposed assistant director at NJSIA, who was right next to the Camden AD. The, those are the people I'm upset with. I'm not mad at the kids. I can't be mad at the kids as a coach. It's the failure of adults and educators have failed the kids. That is the big take I have with this. Hopefully, it's a remedy to the solution. But I'm telling you, the state of New Jersey, this. It doesn't matter if you fix this or not. I'm still coming for you. And I already said, I want to be part of the committee to make changes in the state of New Jersey to help athletics, especially in basketball, because we're doing a disservice to the kids. That was the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever seen. Like, it was just so obvious. And then uh, to see the fallout from it, all the kids in the school talking about it on the news. It made uh, the evening news uh, in New York City. 
it made the evening news. And there's no reason for that other than there was corruption at the highest level. All right, so let's talk about uh, – we already went over this game tonight between Boston and Denver, but I want to get your opinion of it because it's such a great game. This is, to me, the epitome of the NBA Finals when these two hook up. The last time it was a, a Denver bucket win in Boston, which they never lose at home, but Denver was able to find a way because they're champs. Now they got him in Denver tonight. Yeah, they got him in Denver tonight. I think it's a, a fantastic game. I'm actually going to think – I'm going to take the Celtics on the money line. I, I, I think also because – you know, when you lose a game the way they lost at Cleveland, you talk about refereeing calls, you know, there, there's another one for you. Uh, when you lose a game like that, I think for Boston, and this sounds crazy, after a long losing streak, how do you get back on the horse? You go get a win. So a win at Denver, I think it's going to be a great game between the two best teams right now playing in the NBA. But because Boston lost and how they lost at Cleveland with that huge lead blowing it down the stretch, I think Joe Mazzola will have a motivated bunch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the Celtics on the money line and get a big win at Denver. Wow. So you're going rogue here and that they're going to win in Denver. I said earlier that I thought Gordon and Porter were a huge key to this game tonight because of how much attention Joker and Murray will get from Boston. I need, you know, on the other side, betting on Denver, that I need Gordon and Porter to step up big time. Yeah, and I think, I think you make a good point. So if you want to take what Pharrell's saying, it's basically Murray and the Joker get canceled out by Brown and Tatum. So now we're going to the next group of guys, right? So that becomes the Gordon and Porter versus, let's say, the Porzingis, Derek Wright, Drew Holiday. Because if you both of these coaches, both Malone and Missoula, are two of the better defensive coaches, they do such a great job, Pharrell, of taking away what you do best. So now it's going to come down to the ancillary guys, the role guys. That is what this game's going to come down to. And I think it's a fascinating matchup because if either team's going to win a title here, folks, it's going to take more than this two superstars of the team. It takes the role guys. If you saw Michael Porter Jr. last year, especially defensively getting rebounds, had some big scoring games. Aaron Gordon, same thing. Now you get the other side. This is a big spot for Porzingis. Never really made a deep run in the playoffs, right? Drew Holiday's got a ring. He was brought here. Derek White showed flashes. This is a big game. I want people to watch the matchup of those two uh, on them versus those three versus Boston. Because I guarantee you, which set plays better is going to win the game. I still got to get your plays, but I want to get your opinion. I said earlier that Ben Simmons needs to retire. Oh, it, 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 it's, it's sad. It's sad. I mean, he... He was such an unbelievable talent coming out of LSU and out of Mountain. I feel I do believe Mount Birdie uh, Academy playing for for the great Kevin Boyle, the old coach, obviously up here in New Jersey. People know St. Pat's or St. Patrick's School, whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, but this is a, this is a sad tale of someone, whether it's injuries or mental health. For I'm going to say this, and I, and I don't mean this in a weird way. I just don't think the guy likes basketball. I don't I don't think he has an interest. I don't think he wants to work hard enough at it. And I think this is the issue, folks. Listen, it's a career. It's a grind. It's a lot. You're hurt. You're banged up. You're mentally and physically fatigued. I don't know how bad this guy wants it. And if I'm the Nets, if he never plays again, just eat the money, let it go. But this is another reason, folks, why Sean Marks should not be a GM in the NBA. This is the fight. This should be the final like nailing the coffin for this guy's career in Brooklyn. He has to be fired at the end of the year. They just won't fire him. Cy will not right, fire that, that I, guy. He should have been fired know. five times already, and it hasn't happened. He's not going to fire him now. I think those two uh, are made for each other, Simmons and Marks. All right, let's get to your uh, picks tonight. So you, the Nets are playing in Detroit. And you're rolling Pistons here tonight, even though uh, they're as bad. I mean, the Nets are bad. Uh, the Pistons are as bad as bad can be. I mean, by the way, Sean Marks and Ben Simmons, aren't they both Australian? Yes. I mean, they're from the same region. Oh, hey, hey, hey. If, it, if it walks like a kangaroo and talks like a kangaroo, it might be a kangaroo. Anyway, I am taking the Pistons plus two and a half. Yes, I said it. They are 4-2 against the spread the last six games. Nets 5-5. Five and five. I just think this net team's going nowhere. Detroit has played a little bit better since they've moved over with some of the veterans. 
giving their young kids time. Also, don't sleep on Jalen Duren getting over his points plus rebounds. Give me the Pistons plus two and a half at home. They get the win. You talk about the the Nets are going nowhere. Where are the where are the Pistons going? To hell? I mean, they're, they're, oh, yeah, they I mean, they're, 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 where are they, they going? They, Hey, they, hey, at least they're coming back up a little bit. They, they've been uh, a little bit better, bro. They've been a little bit more competitive than, to me, to Berkman, Brooklyn has. All right, what about this big spread for the Suns game against the Raps in the Valley? I'm going to go with the Suns minus the points. This Raptors team is 0-4 against the spread the last four games. If you look at this Phoenix team with this tough schedule, just came off a big – this is where you have to think about Phoenix. You just came off a big 10-point win at Denver. You cannot – Take be take it seriously if you lay an egg tonight at home. You got a day of rest. You go and you blow this team out because you got the toughest schedule in the NBA the rest of the way. You need wins and you need to win big. Give me the Suns minus ten and a half at home tonight. So and you think the Dubs handle the Bulls no problem here? It's moved to eight. Well, it's moved to eight. I think the issue is is look at what happened, right? First off, both teams are coming off a of back to back, right? But the key with Golden State is uh they played at home and they won by thirty five. Chicago played at Utah, one by two, crazy game, got to get on a flight, fly to Golden State and play them. The Warriors, folks, they're starting to play better. I don't believe in Chicago. I think those dubs roll them and roll them big. They went by double and, digits tonight. And what about Bam in Dallas tonight? I like Bam out of Bayern to go over his points. If you look at his, his matchup, Bam, uh, this is the guy that should be able to score. It could be the number one scoring option on this team. And if you look at it, Dallas – Terrible against the funding bigs. He gets busy tonight. Yeah, that kid shot that ball. <laughs> there was so much time left on the clock. It wasn't even funny. Six that points. is so Six embarrassing. Points. That was so embarrassing. I've never seen anything more corrupt in high school sports in my life. The Lion's Share, presented by Bet MGM. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Conor McDavid, no longer can be part of the sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible game. So you could still have a Conor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40-yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible 
to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. All right, uh, Davis Lee Roth, Maddock, of course, uh, from Fantasy Sports Today, joins us every day on Coast to Coast. And uh, you can catch him at Davis Maddock. It's M-A-T-T-E-K. And remember, it's Davis, D-A-V-I-S. So don't screw that up. Uh, You can catch him here on C2C. So I want to start with this today, uh, the Braves, right? I was watching them play today. And... I was watching Snicker do interviews. I was watching Riley do interviews in the middle of the game. And and then I, you know, Cone and these guys were talking about um, Chris Sale and how fantastic he looks uh, in the spring and that he's finally healthy. And uh, that's like me believing that Ben Simmons is finally healthy. If he... Uh, goes to training camp next year for another year of ripping people off uh, with all of his nerve damage and problems. That guy never plays. We've already said on the show 50 times he should retire. He's pathetic. Uh, And for me, Chris Sale is a guy that is washed. He just never stays healthy. It will not take long, in my view, for him to be injured again. He always is. And I'm sitting there listening to these guys today. And granted, they're all great at their jobs. I'm not being disrespectful of them, you know, talking about it during the game. But I found it almost laughable to listen to them tell me, do you know how many times I've heard uh, guys uh, in the booth or guys themselves, athletes say, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm, I have never been better physically. I'm in great health. Uh, I'm excited that I'm finally healthy going into the season coming from a guy that's been injured 7,000 times. That's like me believing that uh, Giancarlo Stanton won't miss two months this summer because he suddenly lost 20 pounds. I don't want to hear it. Like, you can't sell me the bill of goods on sale. I don't deny he was great. I don't deny he got a ring. I don't deny that when he was good, he was as good as it gets. But those days are long gone to me. Now they're saying he's the missing piece. Missing piece of what? They can't beat the Phillies with him or without him. I mean, theoretically, a guy who could pitch 32 games and would be available for them in the postseason might be the missing piece. But I'm, I'm pretty much with you. It's very rare in the history of baseball for a guy of Chris Sale's age to come back and, and totally turn things around, especially because, you know, for as long as Chris Sale has been around, all the way back to 2010, really, this has been a guy – who his delivery, basically scouts said, like, you're going to have to clean that up or you're going to end up getting injured. And it, it didn't really impact him for a long time, long time for the White Sox. He was able to get through seasons. He was awesome for the Red Sox in 2017 and 2018. He was much worse in a uh, very limited time there for the Boston Red Sox in 2019. In fact, he was, he was pretty bad in 2019. He was only able to go nine games in 2021 two games in 2022 he was able last season to get in 20 games but guess what he changed his approach he had to you know just to stay healthy it's a little bit he had to pitch differently his strikeouts went down his walks went up his hard hit rate went up his line drive weight went up which tells me scotty sure maybe he can come here spring training blow some guys away maybe he's he's tinkering with the new pitch or whatever maybe it works out for a month Maybe it works out for six weeks. Maybe he's able to get through eight starts or something like that where he looks pretty strong, you know, two and a half ERA, striking a bunch of guys out. But I don't imagine that being super sustainable. I think probably what's much more likely is he'll be like a 3.8 ERA guy. He'll give up more home runs than you want him to because he's a left-hander, and he'll mostly be okay. And and 
If the Braves end up having a great season, they'll be lauded as geniuses. If the Braves end up losing to the Phillies again, no one will even remember this transaction happened, really. Well, listen, they're already a really good team. Uh, they're already, uh, in my view, um, you know, I think they're better than the Phillies. I think that they are head to toe, top to bottom, more loaded than the Phillies, more talented than the Phillies. I just think the Phillies have their number. Uh, you know, it's twice in a row they beat them three one, and uh, they're you know just in their heads. They're living rent free penthouse. I think they got their um, their their kryptonite, and there's just no getting around it. But they are with the Dodgers, the two best teams in baseball. Now, I I guarantee you that you and I at some point are going to be talking about this again, where he's injured. It, it's it's only a matter of time. He is always always injured. So it's just a question of when is he going to go down again? And, and all these people trying to sell me that he's found some elixir, that he's found some fountain of youth. Is a load of shack is what it is. It's just an absolute load of shack, and that's all there is to it. And guys like him that are injured always, that's who they are. That's who they are now. He's just washed. They're trying to make him out to be this guy from 2018. Christ, it's almost 2050. And this guy's still pitching. He might as well mow my yard. His days of dominating anyone are over. I guarantee it. I mean that's the human body. When when you when you every year you get a little bit older, that you gets a little bit harder to heal, especially for starting pitchers. Honestly, the the one guy this is this is why I can't say Chris Sale is done done is because I said the Justin Verlander when Justin Verlander was like 36 years old, I said that dude is done and I mean who knows what they did to this he guy. He doesn't throw like this guy. He doesn't throw. You know what? That is a good point. He doesn't throw like that guy. Let's do it. Let's just say Chris Sale. Chris Sale is either one, not going to be pitching for them in the postseason because he's injured, or he's going to be uh, a shadow of himself. I I'm willing to go there with you on that one. I don't think they need him. I think they have him. And that if he's sure. lucky and gets some miraculous, uh, you know, oh, my God, he's going to be able to pitch in a playoff game. Is almost it'd be the greatest tonic ever for them. But uh, a guy that you said it best, a guy that throws at those angles is certainly not a guy like Verlander who merely kicks off the rubber and brings it. He just throws the ball. He's not. I mean, this guy literally looks like Kent to Colby when he's pitching. He's so sidearm and torquing his body and, and shoulder and arm. No, I'm surprised his arm hasn't fallen off. I think, I mean, that that was always the deal. That was always the deal with him, right? Because I remember when he got called up in 2010, he wasn't even supposed to be that big of, like, a prospect. Like, this was not, like, you know, waiting for um, Steven Strasburg's first ever start or whatever. Right. Because people looked at that weird delivery, and they were like, it's just never going to work. I mean, either the guy's going to flame out before he's ever able to be a starter, maybe he'll be a reliever. In fact, if my memory serves me correctly, I believe he was a he was a reliever um, in in either the minor leagues or when they first called him up, and then he got transitioned into starting. But like we we are well down the road here, and it really shouldn't be much of a surprise that a guy with that delivery has had pretty consistent health problems like the last five years. Well, tomorrow uh, I want to talk to you about Paul Skeens. Because it bothers me, and I need time uh, to talk to you about this, that they're uh, sending him to the minors. And uh, God only knows when his arm's going to fall off, throwing 102 miles an hour every pitch in the minor leagues, when he's literally the best pitcher they have, and they're sending him down. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Let's talk about some other stuff, like Michael Thomas, cut by the Saints today, your thoughts on that first, and then Russell Wilson, the rumors of him having meetings with the Steelers. Meetings sound like deals to me. Well, the, the Michael Thomas thing was just wild because he's he's obviously getting cut. If this dude is on the roster, I believe June 1st is the guaranteed date, he's going to be due $119 million in bonuses. I don't think the Saints want to pay him $119 million worth of bonuses. So he's obviously getting cut. 
but it was so weird. Michael Thomas got on Twitter today to call the reporter who broke this news, who said Michael Thomas is getting cut. He was like, this guy is a fat loser, which was, it was just so bizarre. I, I didn't, I did not really understand what Michael Thomas is. I, I didn't understand, understand what his, his plan was there because he's obviously getting cut. So why attack the, why, why are you killing the messenger, man? Why not, why not get on Twitter and be mad about the team that's cutting you? Yeah, I think because the guy needs to get on, on Ozempic. Um, so what is your thoughts on uh, Russell Wilson and the Steelers? I'm about ready to cancel my season tickets with the Steelers at the thought of him being my quarterback. I mean, it depends on how much money they're paying him, right? I, I don't know how much worse the quarterback play could get. You know, Pickett, Rudolph, is it really, is it really that much worse than that? Now, the, the question you have to ask yourselves is what would you rather have Russell Wilson on a really small veteran contract, you know, one year, $5 million or whatever, or would you rather them trade a second round pick, a third round pick for our boy, Justin Fields from the Chicago bears and have that, you know, you're running the ball like crazy fields is running the ball all the time. The passing offense is definitely going to take a step back. I, I think you could maybe even say, Fields not quite as good of a, a passer, honestly, as as Pickett. You know, w- which of those is more likely to win a playoff game? I I don't know. Probably the Fields one. I I w- Wilson is was bad last year, but he wasn't like the worst quarterback in the NFL. I don't know. What do you think, Fields or Wilson? Which one do you take, Scotty? Oh, I'd I'd much rather have Fields than uh, Russell Wilson. He's uh, he's just so much you know, more dangerous, younger, faster, ankle breaker. The guy can create out of nothing. And I don't believe that Russell Wilson can create anything anymore out of anything. I really don't. Like, we already saw his work uh, in Denver. And I saw, as I said earlier on the show, his coach screaming at him every week uh, that he just apparently doesn't listen to anybody when they tell him to do something. He's, you know, don't you know who I am? Uh, Those days are long gone for him. Uh, you know who he is, the guy that won one and then threw one away at the goal line. I don't care if they didn't call, I, you know, they didn't call uh, Marshawn Lynch to run it in, so they let him throw a pick to Butler. That's exactly what happened, and he's never been the same since. Uh, you're on the Nuggets tonight uh, in Denver, so am I. Yeah, definitely on the Nuggets tonight. I mean, these teams have already played once. This year, obviously, the Nuggets played strong in that game. This game is at home for them. And I think, really, the, the difference is this, is that the Celtics pretty much play to their highest potential almost every single game. The Nuggets definitely do not. I mean, the Nuggets don't even play their best lineup combination every single game because the best lineup that they have when Jokic goes out is to play uh, is to play Gordon as their backup center. I think they are going to do that tonight. I think we get, like, 40 minutes of Jokic you know, Al Horford and Chris Stapp's Porzingis having to try and get in his way. I, I think we see a pretty vintage Jokic performance tonight, maybe even maybe even a little triple-double, maybe a 25, 12, and 10 tripled sauce there for my guy, Nikola Jokic. I, I think the, uh, the defending champs defend quite well at home tonight. Do you think that uh, this is the uh, NBA Finals? No, because I think it's just so hard to predict in the Western Conference. There are too many good teams in the Western Conference. Like, the Nuggets probably win, but definitely, I I don't think it's anywhere close to, like, even money. Wow. So, uh, of those two teams, you think Boston's got a better shot of being in the finals than Denver? I do. Yeah. I just think the Eastern Conference is, like, no good teams, really. So Tatum and Brown are going to the finals, and you can forget about everybody else, and Denver's going to have their hands full. You heard it here. And tomorrow we'll talk about Skeens and his hot girlfriend with Davis and Rock Paddle.
Women's basketball as a coach, as a basketball purist, is so much better to watch than the men. You don't believe me? Sit down, watch it for yourself. Think about the fact that the athleticism is different. So now you have to depend on your fundamental and your skill and not your athleticism. Betting above the rim, only on SportsGrid. Maybe not a match that we thought would be the, the most enticing six months ago, but Newcastle, they are they are kind of on the ropes. They looked awful against Blackburn in the FA Cup. Lamine Yamal has been the stand-up player, you know, a guy that's 16 years old, a guy that was drafted in from, from La Masia, from the academy. It says a lot, really. It says a lot about the really poor standard of, of the rest of the players this season. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca, only on Sports Grid. I think Boston's going to the NBA Finals, and at this point, I'm still willing to say this early that uh, they're the best team in the NBA, even better, in my view, uh, than the Nuggets. Barkley, for me, I say the front runners would be the Dallas Cowboys and or the Philadelphia Eagles, and I think that I think Jerry might get in on this and say just make it happen and get Saquon on our football team. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. It's time for another exciting edition of Today in Carver High History. All right, why don't we start in 1970 uh, today. NC State beat South Carolina in the ACC tournament 42-39 in two overtimes. Geez, scoring was down. 1982, the NCAA tournament selection show is televised for the first time. 1986, Wayne Gretzky breaks his own NHL record by collecting his 136 <laughs> assist. Of the season. Are you kidding me? 1987, Mike Tyson beats James Bone Crusher Smith by unanimous decision in 12 rounds for the WBC WBA heavyweight title. And I think I saw today that Mike Tyson's going to fight again. Uh, he's yes. going to fight Jake Paul. Is that who yes. he's fighting uh, yes. in the summer at, at, at Jerry's World? Are you kidding me? 1989, yes. Dino Cicerelli is traded by the North Stars to the Caps. 1996, Magic Johnson is the second player in NBA history to reach 10,000 career assists. I think we have it. And we're tied at 85. Los Angeles Lakers and both teams having trouble hanging on to the lead. Magic's got the ball. He's against Smith's body press. Magic got to Campbell. 15-footer on the way. Good. Eldon Campbell from Magic. That's five assists, and that's it for 10,000. They'll stop it the next time it's down. That's five. There you go. Wow. The real How about that? Uh, Magic dishing. Unbelievable. 2009, Brazilian soccer star Neymar makes his professional debut for Santos, and he was only 17 years old. 2016, Peyton Manning announces his retirement from the Broncos and the NFL. 2016 as well, Maria Sharapova reveals that she failed a drug test at the Australian Open and is suspended for 15 months. How could we go 15 months without Wait. Sharapova so, out on the court? Are you kidding you remember, me? You, you remember Simona Halep? She got suspended. Yeah. For four years for took doping, and they took it back. They're letting <laughs> her back. come back to tennis, even though she yeah. was lit 
and she failed all the drug tests. They gave her, I think, two years what off of her. To, yeah. She won her appeal. So she can come back <laughs> lit and start winning again on the women's tour. Uh, and I guess who they, uh, who they like is who they let play.